let's talk about a top quilter's best friend, something that is completely necessary if you're taking your top quilt into any kind of colder temperatures, and that is a puffy balaclava or hood. This piece is super critical, and today we're gonna to talk about it on the channel and explain why you need to know more about them. But before we do, really quick, we're Outdoor Vitals, and this channel right here on YouTube is all about getting you outdoors more comfortably and more confidently. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification. So let's dive right into what the heck this thing is. Some of you have maybe never even seen these before, but this is a balaclava. Some people call it a hood, and we're gonna be diving into why this is necessary, as well as some fun other things in this video. So for starters, why is this necessary? For those of you that are not familiar with pop quilts uh, and are in the ultralight backpacking space, get out from underneath the rock and start learning because this is critical. When you're using a top quilt, obviously they have no hood. Um, there's nothing that is wrapping up and around your head to keep it warm at night. So you need to think about those things. Now in lighter temperatures, 40 degrees and above, a lot of times you can throw on a hoodie and put a hood on and that's enough. But if you're getting into the 30s and in the 20s, anything lower than that, it's absolutely critical that you have something like this to go on your head. Now, the cool part about this, though, is there is some versatility. Now, if you're the guy behind the camera here, you like to wear this when you're sitting around the fire at night. I don't typically do that, but you have the ability to use this not just when you're sleeping um, to give you some extra versatility. Now, before you go out and start shopping for one of these for your top quilt, there's a few things that you're going to want to know. You see, I used to use a fleece balaclava for a lot of years because I knew that it could manage moisture. I could breathe in it and it'd be fine and stay warm. The problem is it wasn't nearly warm enough, so that was a problem. The other thing is there's a lot of opportunities out there to get these, but there's a big factor in fit that I feel like is important to address. So let's just dive right into this one and why Weed Outdoor Vitals designed this piece and the specifics behind the reason. So really quick, you'll notice that this has a little bit different fit. You'll notice there's no toggle back here to adjust it around your head. There's just this piece right here. So I've woken up at times when I'm using these and I'll turn my head and I'm completely sideways in this piece. Now, the one that did that a lot did not have a sizing piece right here or no adjustment. So then I got a different one that had the adjustment in the back, but then you have this toggle right here on the back of your head. If you ever lay on your back, that toggle is going to jam into you. I'm gonna take this off. It's a little warm, but you still need that to cinch up. So having this system right here, we've got a band to keep it nice and snug around your head so that you don't turn your face into it. And then two, you've got the ability to cinch it up. Both of those are really critical. Another factor to consider is the length. You do want this to be fairly long um, so that it can get the proper coverage. If you're using a beanie or other things like that, it's just not going to get the proper coverage. Another factor to consider is the weight of this. This is a 10 denier fabric. Now, for most of the time, you are gonna be packing this in your bag, so you want it to be very compressible, but also very light. This is a 10 denier fabric, makes it two and a half ounces roughly. Now, the biggest thing, the biggest thing is moisture. I cannot tell you how many times I have woken up in the night and I am breathing into my hood or balaclava. Basically, I'll start the night off and I'll cinch it up because it's cold, and then look, see how my mouth is not really in that hole? Now I've got two options here. I can tuck it down like this and I can breathe out with a nice face covering, which sometimes works, but sometimes I'll still wake up and I'll be like this. Well, for those of you that don't know, at nighttime, you breathe out about a pint of water. That means there's a pint of water going into this balaclava over the course of the night. That's a big deal because if you've got down, especially down that doesn't have treatment or maybe not a preferred treatment level, um, it's going to collapse over time. So really knowing something that's gonna stay warm and stay lofted when it's moist is important. And that's why with this piece, we opted to use our Loftec hybrid insulation. So this piece is mainly a high loft synthetic, but it's got about 20% of it is a 800 fill power down making this roughly a 650 plus fill power hoodie or insulation level, but you can completely soak it out. You can get it wet. You can breathe in this all night and it's gonna stay warm and it's gonna stay lofted. All right, so now we've made some claims. Let's see if this insulation really will hold up. We got a steamer, we got a fishbowl. Let's have some fun. So the first test that we're going to do is going to involve this steamer. We're gonna blow a bunch of humidity in here and see if we can get it to fail. But first I want to start our next test and drop this in here. It may just float around. We'll give us some time while we do this aspect. 
So the goal here is just to see if we lose any loft. So you can see it here on the table where it's lofted at. And then I'm just gonna take this steam gun, which I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the steam or not on here because it's so hot in this room right now. Um, but we'll steam this and we'll see if we lose any loft and insulation. You can definitely feel the humidity, like everything is getting super damp and super muggy. Oh, I put my finger in that little face hole, burnt the crap out of me. So again, just trying to simulate breathing in this over the course of a night. I'm gonna kind of let this steamer drain all the water in the tank and then we'll look at it and see what happens. Okay, we are getting to the point where it's struggling to pick up the water, so I'm gonna shut this off. I could see some water pooling up earlier on in it. I don't know if you're able to see any driplets or, or things there, but when I turn that inside out, it already got like way more muggy on the inside, so there's definitely moisture in the insulation. Let's just kind of see if we can tell if it affected loft at all. I would say on the first test, pass. I don't see any negative degrading of the insulation at this point. So let's move to the next test. All right, so let's jump over and grab our fish bowl here. Now, as a reminder, I put this in about five, seven minutes ago before we started this last test, and you can see it didn't do, well, anything. I'm actually just gonna pull this out and we'll come back and use this later. And the next part is I'm just gonna take this and stuff it down in here, let it sit on top, and then pour some water on it and see if we can get it to basically soak up any water and degrade the insulation at all. I'm not trying to push this into the water or compress it, just more or less to simulate, let's just say this was getting rained on from the top and the bottom and so water is coming in contact very directly with the fabrics. It's definitely pooling in here because it doesn't have much of a place to go. That's the end of the water. Let's pull this out and see if any of it soaked up and if it affected the insulation at all. Might be a little slower to bounce back because the fabric is now wet, maybe not as breathable, but I don't see any kind of degrade in the loft. Now to this point, I will say down products with good treatments could perform probably both of these tests highly successfully. So let's get into a different level of torture testing. Essentially now I wanna do two different things where I'm submerging them completely. First, I'm gonna submerge this piece and then next I'm gonna submerge this piece and probably also have to compress this piece to soak the water into the fabric. Because as you're gonna see right here, the water's probably not gonna go into this fabric very well. You can see some of those air bubbles coming out of this. So hopefully that's meaning that there's some water going into the fabric. I'm just trying to hold it under the water, not necessarily compress it. Now, we may have lost some loft here because typically you'd want this to dry out a little bit. So let's just see, it definitely hasn't fail. You can see the water coming out of the seams when I do that. And then you can see it here bouncing back, not quite to full loft unless I kind of agitate it like this. And then basically back to that full loft level. So let's take this one step further and maybe realistically, I don't know, if you are going to be packing this, let's say it is in the carry container here. And let's just say it got wet. Um, but as you can see, when we do dump this in, it's not going to take on the water, right? Like it's just going to, for the most part, repel it. So not only am I going to submerge it, but I'm going to compress it and try to force the water into the product by compressing it and then letting it suck the water in. So I'm gonna hold it down here while it regains loft so that it's forced to suck water into the product. All right, I can't imagine how you could possibly in real life scenario get this any wetter in the field. So let's go ahead and drain this. There you got it. Let's see if we can get any more water out of it real quick. Ooh, definitely looking a little bit more flat here. But if you've ever seen down, when you've done this with down, Basically, it would be as lofted as this piece right here because the insulation will completely collapse and fail and it's about that flat. Whereas with this loft tech hybrid insulation right now, we are still getting a decent amount of loft. All right, so if we compare the one that we completely submerged and compressed compared to our other one here, 
Yes, there is a little bit of a loft difference. I would still say that this is probably around a 70% loft level and it will quickly regain that as it um, gets a little bit more time to air out, especially if your face was in this or something like that. Obviously, it's gonna have a lot more heat and things to push all that moisture out. Anyways, this was a fun test. It's just something that we were having fun with, but to definitely highlight the advantages of the Loftec Hybrid insulation, it is going to treat you very well when you breathe in it by accident or maybe on purpose, who knows? It's not gonna fail you in the field and it will become your favorite companion piece to the top quilts. So if you're interested in this piece, they are now going to be on the Outer Riders website. So go check it out. We're probably running some kind of a special the week of the launch. So go see what we're doing over there. Get your hands on one of these and feel confident that you're gonna stay warm in your top quilt on your next outing.